having a government at all involves placing some people above other people. To get to anarcho-capitalism would be a kind of long-term project. So it would probably require, it would require a lot more people to understand the theory. And that's not because like you have to be, you don't have to have like a lot of theoretical understanding to live in this society. But the reason I say that is that if as in our society, only like a fraction of 1% of people actually understand the theory, almost everyone is going to think that they need a government. How the transition goes makes a big difference to the result, right? Like if the government just disappeared overnight, this wouldn't be a good situation because we need the services that they're providing. When I'm saying we don't need the government, I'm saying we should have somebody else be providing it. But if they just immediately disappear, then nobody's providing those services and then it's chaos, right? So we need to sort of like build the other institutions that would be providing the protection and dispute resolution ser services. A lot of people need, need to be convinced that capitalism is better than socialism first, so that then they could be convinced to try this thing of privatizing the police and the court services. Yeah, I suggest that there's a reasonable chance of anarchy coming, you know, the, the orderly good kind of anarchy coming in the future, but I don't know how long it would take. The reason I say this is uh, there's been a lot of intellectual progress over human history, including moral and political progress. There have been radical changes over human history. So if you went back in time a thousand years and you proposed democracy to people, they would think, oh, that's crazy. That is completely unworkable. You know, they tried that one time in ancient Athens and it didn't work. Like, you know, everything, everything just reverted to dictatorship. We've always had dictatorship. Everyone in the world is dictatorship. So you have to have dictatorship, right? Or monarchy or whatever, which is just a variant of dictatorship. Okay. So if you, you know, that's what people would have thought. And then, you know, today about half the world is democratic. Okay. So that's just to illustrate that there can be radical political changes over time. And they're, you know, they're going along with changes in people's values. Like part of the reason we have democracy today is people have more egalitarian values. And also like, we just care more about individual rights. We're less into violence and forcing people to do stuff, okay? That's part of why democracy is spreading around the world, okay? But after democracy spreads to the whole world, there could be further developments. And I suggest this partly because even democratic government is not so egalitarian. It's more egalitarian and more respectful of people's rights than dictatorship. But nevertheless, having a government at all involves placing some people above other people. Like the people in the government get to tell everybody else what to do. So that's fundamentally inegalitarian, right? And you know, fundamentally you're forcing everyone to be subject to this one organization they don't get to choose. So like if you look at the direction in which people's values have been moving over the course of human history, it looks like they should, they should at some point realize that government is really not compatible with our, with our core values, right? You see what I mean? Okay, so if that happened, if we get to a point where actually most people realize that government is incompatible with their values, like it's inherently inegalitarian, it's inherently violating people's rights, then I think they will figure out a way to transition to a stateless society. Thank <laughs> you.